Hello, I'm Luca Torrex, and welcome to my faction guide for Carthage on Rome Total War. Today we're going to be having a look at the campaign map, at the units available, and the buildings that the Carthaginians can have in their campaign. So, this is the starting screen for the Carthaginians. It's not particularly clear, but the white region around here is the region that the Carthaginians start off with at the beginning of the game. I find the empire's a bit divided, but we'll talk about that in a second. First of all, we're going to have a look at the units. Uh, and then we'll see what else is from there. Okay, so these are the Carthaginian troops. So we're going to be going through them one by one and having a look. They have some quite interesting troops. So let's have a look. First of all, the peasants. Obviously, everyone has peasants. Attack three, defense three. Very poor morale. Yeah, I would never bother with them, but that's that. Peasants are peasants, in my opinion. So next up is town militia. And really, this is just a small step up from peasants. There are spearmen, I believe, but they're very poor spearmen, uh, with the seven defence poor morale as well. So, not particularly good either, but just a slight step up from peasants, those 40 less in the units. So, next up is Iberian infantry. This is the most basic form of infantry the Carthaginians can have, I think. Attack seven, defence eight, it's okay, a small charge bonus. I believe these are light infantry. They're okay, they can do a job at the beginning of the game, but obviously later on they do get outclassed. But they do a fine job at the beginning. The thing is, when the Romans come over and they have like a star team, better troops, that's when these guys maybe start to struggle a little bit. Next up, Libyan Spearmen. This is the first proper Spearmen, I would say, in the game. They don't form a phalanx or anything, I believe, but they have the attack of 5 and a defence of 16, so pretty decent defence. And of course, like all spearmen, or the vast majority of spearmen anyway, they have a bonus fighting cavalry, which is what they are made for. That is their purpose. So yeah, Libyan spearmen are quite good. Next up, now I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce this, but the it, this infantry has attack 9 and a defense of 18 with a charge bonus of 4. They are spearmen as well. They can form a phalanx, but unlike the Libyan spearmen, these, these spearmen have good morale, they're well armoured, and they have good stamina as well. So they can stand up to a lot more, plus they have better charge bonuses and stuff like that. These are, as it says here, more all-round soldiers. They're, they're quite a big step up from living spearmen. I, I quite like them, they're good. Next up, Sacred Band. So these are a step up from these guys. Also can form a phalanx, but the defence of 23 is really quite high. And coupled with the good morale and very well armoured, it means that they're very very difficult to route, very difficult to destroy essentially because they will just fight and they can take a lot of hits and still survive. And the attack of 12 is still pretty decent as well. So this is about as good as you get in terms of spearmen for Carthage. And they're pretty good but it's later on in the game until you get these guys definitely. So slingers, these like basic slingers, I think you know you can get sort of, uh, you can get Mercenary slings that are pretty much the same. Attack 3, defense 4, and a missile of only 4, which isn't really good for slingers. I would prefer a higher missile rating than that. But I suppose they can do a job early on in the game. I prefer them to skirmishers, although I think a lot of people would disagree. Skirmishers have a better missile attack. They're faster uh, than slingers. They have bonuses against elephants and so on and so forth, and they are obviously for skirmishing. They can do a job, but the slingers have more sort of rounds. They can they they, they fire more rocks than the skirmishers do. I tend to find that all skirmishers run out of javelins very quickly, and when that happens, they become very useless because they're essentially a troop that has attack three, defense four. So something to consider there. Next up, round shield cavalry. This is the basic cavalry. They're light cavalry, I believe. They they are their purpose is to pursue fleeing enemies. That's because they're fast. Attack 7, Defense 10 is pretty decent for some light cavalry, it's okay. But the, the fact they're fast moving is their main benefit, that's what they're for. Next up, Long Shield Cavalry. So, spear, these, are, these are also light cavalry, but they are armed with spears. Attack 8, Defense 13, and they have a decent charge bonus. Charge bonus is 6, with good morale. Good morale and cavalry I always like. I tend to find in the game that cavalry has poor morale, especially the early light cavalry. So for a light cavalry to have good morale, that's a very good thing. And of course they have the benefit of being fast moving like light cavalry as well, so that's good. Next up, Sacred Bands Cavalry. So these are heavy cavalry, obviously, with an attack 11 and defense of 18 with the same charge bonus, but also with good morale and they're very well armoured. 
hard to take down these guys. Obviously they're slower, but but they're slower than their counterparts, the long shield cavalry, but they certainly can do a job. Uh, they, they will stand up to a lot, and they are probably the best kind of cavalry with a decent unit size that the Carthaginians can have. Next up, General's Bodyguard. So obviously, not much explaining here. The General gets his own bodyguard. Attack 11, defense 14, with good morale. It's pretty decent. They're all right as a bodyguard. I tend to prefer them over chariots. I know a lot of the other, some of the other African factions, particularly Egypt, I'm thinking of, have chariots at the beginning of the game as their generals. I don't personally like chariots. I like cavalry generals more, so this would benefit someone like me. And then after the Marian reforms, you get the general arm and bodyguards. They're basically the same. They've got better uh, defense. They have two hit points with also good morale and they're very well armored. So they're basically slightly better versions, more capable defensively after the Marian reforms. Now, a great thing about Carthaginians, what they're sort of famed for in real life, with Hannibal and so forth, are the elephants. So, basic elephants have only 12 soldiers in a unit, 12 elephants, whatever, no, I think it's 12 soldiers. They have an attack of 5, defense of 12, and a charge of 8, and they have 10 hit points. That's a great thing about them, they have quite a few hit points. Uh, so as you can see, they have a bonus fighting cavalry. A lot of enemies are uh, made feared by elephants. So if you want to have some sort of shock tactic or something like that, then elephants are always good for that. The good morale is, is nice, but if they are damaged too much, they'll just run amok and you can't control them, and they'll just trample over your own troops, as suffered by Hannibal again. So that's something to consider, I suppose. Next up, war elephants. They are slightly tankier, but they also have a missile attack as well. 12 hit points is nice. The missile attack of 6 is pretty decent, but they are... Most missile cavalry in the game is fast moving, whereas the elephants obviously aren't fast moving. So that's something to consider. If I have missile cavalry, I like them to be fast moving as opposed to elephants. So I don't really get the point of missiles on elephants. But I suppose it gives them another form of attack and makes them more versatile, so that's quite nice. And then the final stage are armoured elephants. Pretty much the same, just they've got better defence. Uh, that's, that's pretty much all I've got to say about them. They are good. And they're very difficult to take down, so if you like elephants, these are the best that Carthage can get, pretty much. Now the siege equipment, basically the same as a lot of other factions, it's just onagers and heavy onagers. They are used to attack buildings mostly, they are very inaccurate against troops, so I wouldn't bother with that. They're just basically down for taking, they're, they're made for taking down walls, that is essentially it. And then obviously heavy onagers are slightly better, they have a better attack and they can do better against buildings. That's relatively self-explanatory. Next up, Spanish mercenaries. So, some factions can recruit mercenaries. This is an example of that. I quite like, for mercenaries, for mercenary javelinmen, Spanish mercenaries are pretty damn good. 7 attack and 12 defense means they can, they are capable even if they don't have their missiles. And a missile attack of 11 is pretty decent. If you compare them to the javelinmen, who only have a, sorry, skirmishers who only have a missile attack of 6, the Spanish mercenaries are significantly better, so that is something to consider. Uh, the Balearic Slingers have a missile attack of 9. It's pretty decent. They have a charge bonus, which is interesting. But I like these because they have good morale as well. So if you like Slingers, they're basically a better version of these Slingers. So that's these Slingers. And then the Numidian mercenaries. I think you get them on. I think you get them later on in the game. I'm not sure. Numidian mercenaries are basically Numidian cavalry. They are very fast moving with good morale, and obviously they have javelins, that's what the new medium cavalry was famed for. So, if you like skirmishing and javelin cavalry, this is a, a nice option for you. So we are going to go back and look at the faction introduction video, and then we'll have a look at the campaign map and the buildings. Last night, the crying of the children kept me awake, and I had a terrible vision. I saw the fall of our city, bleached bones under a harsh sun. Carthage, gone. Why would Baal send such a vision? He is not cruel. He has watched over us. We have had victories aplenty in war. Our merchants sail to all corners of the world. And yet now, I fear I cannot help it. We are the envy of lesser people. 
They tell terrible lies about us. They do not understand, so they lie. But the Romans, they are the masters of falsehood. War will come. I'm sure of it. So I will have no more false visions. And I think the children will be quiet tonight. Okay, so this is the starting screen for the Carthaginians. As you can see, the Empire is pretty much divided over a relatively large area, a bit like the Greeks uh, in that sense. So, having a look, we'll start off with the capital city. I believe it's a capital city. Yes, it is. Carthage itself, the main place. So, Carthage is here. And you start off with Hasdrubal, Hasdrubal, town, two town militia, and you really mercenaries. Honestly, not particularly good, especially since it's a capital city. Um, but Hasdrubal is the faction there, so he has a bit more cavalry. But you can instantly recruit Iberian infantry and round your cavalry, so it's decent, it's decent. But I would say you could do better than that. Maybe move some troops to Carthage, but there are other areas that are more vulnerable at the beginning, so don't worry. Thapsus. Thapsus has better troops, round shield cavalry, and some Iberian infantry. Possibly would move them up. Thapsus is less vulnerable. And Carthage is less important as well, although I quite like Thapsus as well. So, yeah, this is the two settlements here. Now, they have one settlement on the island of Sicily. Lilibium is over here, and it's not very well defended. There's one family member, two town militia, and a skirmisher. Now, considering the two other factions live on this island as well. You have the Scipiones here in Masana, and you have the Greek cities over here in Syracuse. So, particularly the Scipii are the worry. If the Scipii come over, then you have a bit of trouble. Thankfully, you have this man over here, Hanno, or Hannibal, I believe. So, the faction leader, one of the greatest generals of all time. And he has some decent units. Elephants, Roundshield Cavalry, Iberian Infantry. This is your best army, so you could either use it to protect the lead by them, or if you'd like to be more aggressive, go for one of the two factions straight away. If I was going to go for anyone, I would go for the Scipii because they are stronger and they are a greater threat. So taking them out early makes sense. You also have mercenary units available. Hoplites are always good. So consider picking them up, especially as you have a decent financial position at the beginning. 7,000 denarii is quite good. Just looking over here quickly and seeing what the Scipio have. Uh, Masana is not particularly well defended, only four units. This army should be able to take out that army, so that is something, that is a move I would try and do early on. And then looking at the Greeks over you. here in Syracuse, they are better defended. So I would go for the Scipii first, build up a strong force and take Syracuse. That's how I would deal with Sicily. You don't need to bring troops from elsewhere to Sicily. Lilibium is a good settlement and you have Hanno over here. It should be enough to take those two settlements in my opinion relatively quickly and that's something I would like to do quick you wish you should do quickly because Sicily can become a bit of a mess if you leave those two factions to become strong and the Scipii will likely take it they'll take Syracuse that's for sure next up we have the island of Carolus Carolus is quite good it's decent for trading any island in the Mediterranean is good for that it's not very very well defended but it's not very vulnerable really the only faction that bothers with Carolus is the Scipii Possibly the Julia. I have seen the Julia take Carolus before. It's not somewhere that's a major threat early on. That has any major threats early on. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. But I don't even think it has walls. So something to consider. If you want to consolidate a little bit of force here. That would be advisable. So next up is Parma. Similar sort of situation. It doesn't have walls either. But it has a general. Two slingers and some town militia so that's better defended odd how palmer's better defended but similar sort of situation with carthage it's all right for trading and then very importantly over here cordoba the little slice of carthage or carthaginian power on the spanish mainland so if you don't know what the situation in spain looks like basically there are four spanish settlements i believe scalabis asturica Carthaginoa, and oscar and then Numantia is in the centre, that, that belongs to the Gauls. There's potential enemies over there. There's two ways you really could go about it. You could have an alliance with the Spanish, which is what I would do, and not bother with 
attacking them. The, Sp uh, the Spanish seem to be open to an alliance with the Carthaginians, which is interesting. So, uh, going for that option would be advisable because you're likely to be at war with the Scipii early on, and you don't want to have too many fights in the early game. And if you want to take a little bit more Spain, you can always go for Numantia. That's relatively weak. The Gauls haven't got too much of a force up there. So you can have this slice of Spain, and then if you have an alliance, you shouldn't worry too much about the rest as long as they honour that alliance, which isn't always the case. So that is the situation with Spain. So that is Carthage's general position. So what would I go for first? What would I do? First of all, your main threat is the Scipii. The Scipii always expands south from Sicily. So be aggressive, obviously take Masana. And then if you want, you can try and take Capua there. There is more of a force at Capua, and that is obviously the capital city and so on and so forth. But if you want to eliminate the Scipii, it's actually not too difficult in the early game. They're probably the easiest faction to eliminate if you're non-Roman. So that's something to consider. And then kicking the Greeks off here is easy. And then there's not too much of a threat from Greece because they're all the way over here and they'll be dealing with the Brutii. So once you kick Greece off, you don't have to worry about them anymore. As for the Numidians, they are down here. The Numidians are not too much of a threat. In fact, I wouldn't worry about them at all. They have very poor units. It's commonly known in the <laughs> Total War community that Numidians are they, they have terrible units and that's why they're one of the far, hardest factions to play us. So even if they do declare a war on you, I wouldn't worry too much. The, the difficult thing as Carthage is, once you've dealt with the Scipiones, unless you want to go and fight all the Roman factions at once, there isn't a huge amount to expand. Now it is quite easy to expand west into Numidia and it's easy to expand through here. But then obviously you have a lot of land which isn't hugely profitable. Some of it's decent. Lepkis Magna's all right because it's on the Mediterranean coast. But eventually you'll get over to Egypt and that is when stuff really starts going down because Egypt is tough to deal with. But by the time hopefully you expand over to Egypt you should have better troops. Like I sort of discussed earlier there are better troops available. So Makes, my advice is basically make sure you're strong enough to attack Egypt, don't go for them straight away. You could consolidate power by taking Lepkis Magna and Cyrene and Siwa over here, so something to consider there. But if you'd rather go for the Romans, taking the Scipii out isn't too difficult, you just go over to Masa um, Capua over here, and then obviously you will get to war with the Brutii and the Julii, Brutii being more of a threat because they are nearer to your land. So next up we're going to have a look at the buildings and then we will be done with this episode. So these are the buildings available, if I just have a look, so that's the wrong settlement. So buildings available to Carthage. We have obviously the different levels of city which are, they are decided by what kind of palace your governor lives in. So that's the same with all the factions. Walls. Once again, like most factions in the game that aren't barbarian, you get the, the basic wooden palisades up to the huge, uh, sorry, epic stone wall. In terms of barracks, the barracks get better as you can, as you grow, and then you can get better melee units. It's relatively self-explanatory. The same with the cavalry and missile units for the stables and the rangers, respectively. Traders work as you would probably imagine. They increase trade. Smiths increase the armor and the weapons and so forth, ports, relatively self-explanatory, water supply is the same as the Romans, essentially the better water supply you have, the, uh, the better public health, but as you can see they don't have access to higher level of water supply so the Romans can get aqueducts and so on and so forth, the Carthaginians it caps at public baths so something to consider there, you don't want population growing too much because the health is a bit of an issue. Farms, it works pretty much the same as the Romans. Land clearance, and it works up to the highest level, which is great estates. Roads is very relatively similar. Academies got up to Ludus Magna, which is obviously very good for training your generals up, particularly to make them good managers or have good influence. Now, like I discussed last time with Egypt, there is a law enforcement system going up to the secret police network, which gives you public order bonus because people are scared, essentially. Now, the important thing and the unique thing to Carthage are the three temples. There are the temple, the shrines to Tanit, Baal, and Milquart. I'm sorry if I pronounce any of them wrong. So, first of all, let's have a look at Tanit. And the awesome temple of Tanit, which is obviously the highest level, has a public order bonus of 20%, and improved farms and food production by four. That's a huge amount, that is quite a lot. So, Tanit is an interesting one. It's not one I hugely recommend, but if you really want to grow a settlement, 
that is what I would do. And ultimately, you can get a lot of growth and money through farming if you have Temple of Tanit. And it's sort of the sort of debuffs through fast population growth are nullified by the fact that there is a public order bonus of happiness, but it's only 20%, and there's only one public order bonus. So something to consider there. Shrine to or the Temple of Baal is all to do with public order bonus and if you get to the end you can recruit sacred band as discussed earlier so Baal is all about happiness and then Milkwart public order bonus due to happiness and an increase in tradable goods so if you have a good trading settlement like I don't know Carolis or Palmer Milkwart is the option for you that is essentially that is essentially it for the temples so that is pretty much it so you have a good amount of starting money at the beginning and you have a decent amount of settlements so take advantage of that you can consolidate a force by taking out these easy rebel and Numidian settlements I wouldn't worry about Spain I always think Spain's more trouble than it's worth it's not particularly profitable and then you end up in all the, the towns are far away from each other so you can spend a lot of time traveling and there's not a huge amount of reward for it going for Sicily and Italy first is greater and you want to go, I always say this, you want to go for the Romans early on if you're near them because they become very, very strong and the longer you leave them, the more difficult it's going to be. Even if you have strong troops, their troops are going to be stronger than your troops at the end of the day. So taking them out early when the difference isn't too big is what I would recommend. And then Egypt, make sure you're strong enough to attack Egypt because they can be very annoying. But they don't, they, Egypt doesn't tend to expand east, which is good. So they don't threaten your empire too much. It's more about you attack Greece rather than the other way around because e uh, sorry, you attack Egypt rather than the other way other way round because they tend to travel easterly direction towards the Seleucids and so on and so forth, Parthians and all that. So that is my advice for the Carthaginian campaign. I would say maintain a good navy, take out the Romans, have peace with the Spanish, and then take advantage of the fact that Numidia are poor and weak. So that is that is all. Thank you very much for watching and we'll have a faction guide coming up very soon along with the Gore campaign. See you around.